I assume you are here because you need help fixing or renovating your business. Maybe you need more customers. Maybe you need more sales. Maybe you want greater profits. Perhaps your website is not making you money 24 seven. Maybe your marketing sucks. Maybe you are stuck in the daily grind. You can't get out of the engine. Your business is slowly killing you. You want to free up time, earn more profits, have a better quality of life. Or maybe you just worn out and stuck and not sure what to do next. And that's okay. You're in the right place. Over 96% of businesses around, this, around the world experience these common problems every single day of the operation. And in this masterclass, I'm going to show you four things. I'm going to show you the number one reason why 96% of businesses struggle day after day, no matter how hard they try or how much effort they put into their business. Then I'm going to show you 13 sequential steps that I've learned in business over the last 25 years of scratch, of scratch building businesses. They are really going to help fix or renovate your business once and for all. I'm then going to show you a seven week time frame of how you put these 13 steps into manageable chunks into time structure that makes it executable and very practical for you to start using right away in your business. And then finally, I'm going to show you my seven week business transformation program that over 700 very happy business owners around the world have been through. This will be of interest to you if you are genuinely serious about fixing or renovating your business and stop going alone and struggling and not knowing what to do. It is free of hype and all the misleading theories, the usual rubbish we see everywhere. Okay, let's begin. Let's take a look at the number one reason why businesses struggle day after day. The answer is business owners don't know how money flows. Let me explain. Here's what most people do. They take the idea. It's the idea that the world's going to love it. People are just going to buy it. And this idea in some instances goes on for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. The business owner still has this idea that he thinks the world is going to love and is refuses to change or adapt anything. But it's still an idea and it's still struggling. You have to find red hot niches where the money is naturally flowing, where customers are naturally buying easy. These are established markets, red hot niches. And what most people do while they struggle in business is they try and pull this entire market into the idea and attract and convince people in these markets where they're spending money easily. This is not right. My business idea and product is right. This is not how money flows. This is why businesses struggle year after year. So with that very important piece, now that we understand that, let's move into the 13 steps. All right. Step number one is you need to position your business in a red hot niche. I've already explained previously that you can't take an idea and try and pull an entire market to you because the cash is not flowing. What you want to do is you want to take your idea and you want to move it into the sweet spot where the cash is already flowing. You want to move it into these red hot lucrative niches, what I call the sweet spot where the cash is there. How do you do this? The first thing is you've got to work out where the cash is flowing. How do you do that? You need to find established markets, established markets where their customers are buying naturally, easily and frequently. Now, why does this make sense? Why established markets? People buy when they see other people doing things, right? So they see lots of people buying something. They think it must be safe. Therefore, they're more inclined to buy that easily. When people don't see people buying, people haven't bought. There's much resistance. They are scared. They don't think it's safe. It's just human nature. This is understanding how money flows. Now, the way you tap or move your idea, and again, the goal is moving your, your idea or your business that's struggling into these sweet spots. How do you do that? You use the shift and sift method. 
Let me explain this. When I started my first business at the age of 23 with $800 my father shed, my partner and I were fresh out of university. We had engineering degrees. We thought we knew everything. We had this brilliant idea that the world was going to love. We were going to write computer software to help businesses become more efficient and prove profits and blah, blah, blah. The world was going to love it. So we went to a trade show and we spent a lot of money on, on getting set up, my money, the all that I had, and nothing happened. For 18 months, that business just struggled, struggled, struggled. Why? Because we were not in the sweet spot. So what happened? When we were going to these presentations and saying this is the most marvelous software, it's going to improve efficiency and you're going to make more profits and etc. They would say, the customer would say, well, we're not really interested in this, but are you able to supply computer hardware? Now, this is starting to shift into where the money is naturally flowing. We were even asking for these sales and people were asking us to please supply them. So we started to do that. We shifted our business into the sweet spot and we did and we tried we started selling computer hardware and as we started to do this and more and more people started to buy the customers would say you you know it would be really great if you guys had a small showroom or a showroom where we could actually come and see the stuff that you are selling so we did we opened up the first uh, little retail store uh, in our province in Durban at the time, which had computers on, on display. It was small, but this was the early 90s. Computers were not sold like that. They were sold out of garages where there were no displays. There was tech geeks selling all this stuff. So we put up the first little showroom and the business started to really, really boom. This was what we call shifting naturally to where the money is flowing. And all I was doing was listening to what customers were asking me as opposed to me ramming my beautiful idea down their throats which they didn't love or want. And what happened with this little business as I learned more and more about my customers they would say things like this showroom is great but you know it would be even better if you guys could open on a Saturday and Sunday because I would love to bring my family to see a family solution. So we did. We became the first computer retail store in our province to open on the weekends because our competition was opening Monday to Friday. This was huge. This were now sitting in the sweet spot where the money was naturally flowing just by listening to our customers. So we did. And then the next thing I did was in shifting and sifting. We were selling computers and printers and multimedia kits. Now back in the 90s, all that stuff was not plug and play like it is today. There you had to go home and plug all this together and make it all work. Can you imagine how hard that was back in the 90s? Families trying to put all the stuff that was very incompatible. No plug and play windows like it is today where everything's just done. So I created a all-in-one family bundle solution. The families would come in on the weekends, see the displays that they loved, and just buy an all-in-one kit that they could go home, a color printer, connect to the internet, and this is all taken for granted now, but in those days it was like this big thing. And it was all in one solution. And when I put that together, the Atomic Family PC, which was called, this business went from $800 to $12 million in five years, purely because I had shifted and sifted from my very fancy, clever idea that got me nowhere, into the sweet spot where customers really wanted to buy. Okay, step number two, create your competitive edge. So in step one, we position your business or your idea into these sweet spots where there's lots of competition. Now, businesses go to where the cash flows. So if you're in a red hot lucrative niche, you're going to have business competition. Please understand that that is not a problem. If there is no competition going on, you are not in a lucrative niche because if it was a lucrative niche, businesses would be going there, all right? Business owners are smart. They go to where the cash flows. So we are now in a red hot niche where there's lots of competition. So step two is you now need to create your competitive edge and stand out in this crowd. How do you do this? The first thing is you want to know what is your customer's ideal shopping experience? What do they really want from buying your product and service? 
That's the first thing. The second thing is, what three things make them angry or frustrated right now? In other words, what are the competition doing wrong? Right, so you know what ideally what they want, what customers are doing wrong, uh, sorry, what competition is doing wrong. You need to just plug the gaps. And this is how you create your X factor. This is how you become the business customers want to buy from. Let's go back to my first example of my retail store. I told you by just listening to the customers, I worked out what their ideal shopping experience was. Please show me displays of what I'm purchasing. Please open on the weekends. And there was another huge thing that competition was just not doing what customers truly wanted. It was making them frustrated and angry. One of the things was uh, easy finance, no deposit. Back then, getting finance for a computer was a big problem. They, you had, I think you had to put like a 30% deposit down. That for many people was unachievable. That was a huge problem. And I'm going to tell you how I solved that problem a little later in my joint venture section coming up. But what I did was I listened to that immense problem that was causing customers to be so frustrated and angry because they couldn't purchase easily. I solved that and the business overnight grew around 35%. That's coming up how I did that. But in this step, these three things, this is how you stand out and dominate your niche, no matter how busy the niche is. And when you think about this, it's really not that hard. Just listen to what your customers are asking for, because most competition are not. I'll give you one more example of how I start out in a hugely, hugely competitive niche. My second business that I built was a distribution business, international distribution business, where I was selling ink cartridges and toners. So I was in the printing industry. Now, if you've ever bought an ink cartridge for your printer, you will know how complicated it is to remember the cartridge numbers and the printer models. So customers, I've been in retail, as you know, I would hear customers coming into these shops all the time and, and uh, struggling to remember the Epson SOQ15, the HP45A, the, the Canon BCI221. And then, okay, you've got the, what is my uh, printer model number? And they were just so confused. And customers would come back with ink cartridges open saying, you sold me the wrong one. The salespeople say, I never, you chose it. And there was always this conflict going on. So I thought, there's a situation where what is the customer's ideal shopping experience? They would just love to become and easily choose a cartridge. What is making them unbelievably angry, angry and frustrated is how competition make this thing so complicated for the customer. I came up with a solution of putting pictures on ink cartridges. So a strawberry for a Canon cartridge, a parrot for HP, a golf club for Epson, etc. Each cartridge had a specific picture. So the customer, all they had to do was remember their parrot, their story, their golf club. It was a very, very easy solution. And that way, I stood out amongst literally thousands and thousands of other companies all trying to fight themselves on the internet, selling cheap, cheap, cheap internet um, printer cartridges on the internet or in store. This was a very unique solution. And that's how you create an X factor and become the business customers want to buy from. Okay, step number three is who buys from you the quickest and the easiest? Not everyone is your customer. You cannot sell meat to a vegetarian. It doesn't matter how fancy your meat is, if it's been blessed by the Pope or grew on the moon. Whatever it is, whatever your sales pitch, how fancy your meat is, a vegetarian is never going to buy your meat products. So, we learned in the first first step that you have to find these red hot niches all right then you have to learn to stand out in those red hot niches but inside those red hot niches where there's lots and lots and lots of customers out of those customers you will find groups of customers who will buy from you quicker and easier than other groups of customers and what i show you in step three and teach you is what we call I call the hot pot method. So I classify in this red hot niche with all these customers who are all buying. 
Who out of all those clumps of customers will buy from you the quickest and easiest? That is called your hot pot. Those are the customers you want to focus on. This is how you get real uh, accurate marketing messages and sales pitches. This is why this is step three right in the beginning. What most people do with sales and marketing, they do all their presentations and pitches, they don't really understand who their customers are, their real customers, which I'm going to come to in a second. Very, very important. So you want to find your hot pot. That's the first step in step three. And this is very important. The cash is in the want, not the need. Customers will buy easily, easily if they want something, not if they need something. Let me give you a really great example. I used to run business uh, uh, networking groups, workshop groups for businesses in Australia and New Zealand. And in one of these sessions, there was a guy from a finance company who specialized in the restaurant in industry. And he'd sell, you know, finance for equipment, furniture, etc. He came to my workshops, he saw the structure, all the workbooks, and he thought this is just the best thing he's ever seen. He wants to take this concept into the restaurant industry because of the structure, they start at one point, they move through, etc. Fantastic. I said, for sure, we're going to do it. Let's do it. He then went to the Queensland Catering Association, which is the largest um, association for restaurants in the province here where I live, Queensland. We presented that, loved it, absolutely endorsed it. This was about 10, 12 years ago. And they said, we're going to promote it to our four or 5,000 members or whatever it is at the time. So we thought this was just going to be the best thing that ever hit the earth. You've got this huge uh, organization, huge authority in this niche, promoting it, endorsing it. This guy who had this finance company was well known amongst all the restaurants. And we launched this thing in their magazines and blah, blah, blah. And guess what happened? Nothing. We sold almost nothing. Why? These res restaurants desperately needed this help. Because 96% of restaurants fail and the ones who make it don't make much money. There's very few really successful, profitable restaurants. It doesn't matter. They desperately needed this, this stuff. Did they want it? No. So they didn't buy it. People go into Walmart Best Buyers and they spend thousands and thousands on dollars on the new home theater and the fanciest TVs. They go and buy brand new cars. They go out for dinner. They go on $10,000 holidays. They don't have the money. Most of them, they go on credit card. They extend their mortgages. They go into debt to do this stuff. It doesn't matter. They want it. Therefore, they buy it. They, they want the latest iPhone. They sleep outside a store for three days. Yes, they really do. And they'll just spend money. This is where I call where the cash is flowing easily. You're not going to change people's buying behaviors. That's not your job. You're there to sell them things that they want. This is the difference between the want and the need. And the final piece for step three, which is so important, is when you do step three, what I teach you when you do this hot pot method, you will discover who are your real customers. There is a huge difference between what is my marketing avatar, my ideal customer, versus the people who are really going to pay you cash for? I've given you some examples of my own business where I had this ideal dream or whatever. I'm going to sell to all these people. And then, you know, this uh, finance example, these are ideal customers who are going to buy for us. Well, then none of them bought. The real customers are the people who hand over cash to you. That's a big difference. That's your hot pot. That's what you need to be focusing on for the next step coming up. Okay, step number four. Here we learn to design your products to sell more quicker. Here's what most businesses do. They design a product or service. They get all the marketing collateral done. They prepare all the PowerPoint presentations, all the sales pitch, train their sales staff, and off they go. What you don't want to do is you don't want to create your product or service first ever. What you want to do is you want to find out exactly what your customers want to buy from you, not what you want to sell them. And the way you do that is through research. And I show you exactly how to do this all in step number four. I know it's a pain in the butt doing research. Not many people like to do it. That's why they don't do it. But you have 
to do it and there's a specific way you must do it to get the right answers otherwise it's all a waste of time but it is truly worth it in the end because when you find out exactly what your customers truly want what you do is you tailor match your solution you're giving them exactly what they want it's not rocket science you just have to learn how to do it properly I've got two examples for you uh, two examples of products and services I've already touched on them earlier the first one is the the family PC bundle that I explained earlier that thing was like I said probably about 10 million dollars worth of sales from that one single product of just listening to where families my real customers were struggling um, where no other competition was providing that solution they desperately wanted so I tailor matched my solution for what they were asking from uh, me the second thing was that uh, the the no finance easy payment solution for finance I've already told you that but this is where I designed all this in step number four but doing all that research up front and then matching exactly what customers are asking giving to them that's what exploded that business into a 12 million dollar business so quickly not because I'm a rocket scientist or think I've got the answers I simply followed my process that I'm teaching you now now quickly want to show you something very very important about these first four steps in step one you found the lucrative sweet spot where the cash is flowing easily the red hot niches then once inside those niches you learned how to, in step two how to stand out in that crowd become the business customers want to buy from in step three we learned how to find your hot pot the real customers amongst all these customers which group is now going to buy from you the quickest and the easiest and then in step four we found which products and services or how do you tailor products and services that these customers who are buying from you the quickest which products and services are they, are they now going to buy from you the quickest and the easiest out of all these products available in the market and when you put those four steps together you get the quickest route to the cash this is not a magic potion show this is a logical process of how cash flows and our customers buy okay in step number five we're going to learn how to design a, a hook and an upsell funnel now this is really important you cannot design a hook if you don't know what your customers truly want and you cannot design an upsell funnel if you don't know what products and services your customers truly want to buy this is why so many businesses struggle with sales because they haven't got these pieces right before they design all their products and their upsell funnels so how do you do this first of all we attract customers via an irresistible hook now what is the purpose of a hook the purpose of a hook like any sales process is first of all to establish trust with your customer before the sales process begins you need to establish trust with your customer if customers don't trust you it doesn't really matter how fancy your product and services the chances of them buying from you is very very slim so the hook products purpose is to allow them to trust your value are you good do you say what you do is your product stack up and if you're an ethical business person you would have no problem allowing customers to test you and try you out first it's the shady bastards out there who just want to grab your money they don't want to give you a chance they'd rather take your money than fight with you when things don't work am i right i am right you don't want to do business like that so you design a hook with the first knowledge of the first steps what do they really want let me give you an example a hypothetical example let's say you had a dairy products company and you wanted to sell yogurt and you wanted to get into the supermarkets you wouldn't try and sell a yogurt such as like a crazy flavor like pumpkin because you think it's the next trend whatever that you think is good the reason why is because most people who go to a supermarket to buy yogurt buy the most popular flavor for example let's say it's chocolate so everyone just naturally buys chocolate yogurt they have their favorite brands but chocolate yogurt is the go so let's say your brand is called Jane's yogurt you want to create something that customers truly want chocolate yogurt so you put it in there and then when customers taste Jane's beautiful chocolate yogurt whatever your little spin on that chocolate yogurt is 
they say, wow, Jane's chocolate, it's really good. I'd, I'd, I'd love to try her vanilla flavor in this. What is this crazy pumpkin flavor she's got going on here? But if you try and put the wrong hook up front, that is too much of a risk for customers. I mentioned earlier, if other people are not buying, if it's brand new, people are not touching it, generally customers wait for someone else to do it and then it's safe to do it, just the way we are. So once you've got this hook established, then you create your upsell funnel. Then you move them naturally because they trust you. This works. Your support is good. You've got good customer support, whatever your deal is. You then move them up to the higher priced items or cross sell items. So once people test and try Jane's beautiful chocolate yogurt, they will say, let me try Jane's custards. Let me try Jane's ice cream range. Let me try Jane's cooking creams for example. So this is how an irresistible hook based on research and process that I've shown you and how you build your up sell funnel. And then very importantly in step five that I teach you is building back-end revenue streams. This is how you make passive income in your business. Now I'm going to show you a lot more about this in the joint venture section coming up. But your back-end uh, revenue streams is where you make your real money. So for in the example of, of my uh, first business, my finance company, when we sold these, uh, my computer company, when we had the finance uh, deal going on, every time we sold finance to a customer, we got trailing commission, which was Unbelievable, there's money just coming in the back end. It was like free money. Every month I get this great check for this amount. I couldn't believe for just doing what we were doing anyway, selling computers and printers. That's called setting up back end revenue streams in your business. And most businesses have this opportunity. Most business owners just don't know it exists or how to put it together. That's exactly what I teach you in step five. It's the start of how you start building passive reoccurring income streams into your business. Okay, step number six, we learn copywriting secrets. Now, this unfortunately is one of the skills you really need to learn in business. This is all your engagement with your audiences. Now, copywriting, most people get wrong because they have not done the first four steps, particularly step number two. If you're going to write compelling adverts, if you're going to write compelling sales pages that convert, if you want to get your email marketing so people are clicking on your emails, they are reading your landing pages, they are uh, engaging with your stuff, you have to learn to master your copywriting secrets. You cannot do that without doing step number two. If you know your customer's deepest desires, fears, anger, pain, frustration, if you know the, the, the absolute ideal shopping experience and outcomes they want from your products and services, these are the foundations of successful copywriting. Most people have no idea about their customers' fears, anger, they guess. They guess on behalf of their customers and get it wrong. That's why they have copywriting that doesn't convert. Now again, copywriting does take practice. I'm not going to put any gloss or fluff on that. But what is more important is rather have an okay uh, copywriting structure, but it's filled with the right keywords of what your customers really want to open. You either appeal to their absolute outcome, they want to see this is what I ultimately want, or these are my deep problems that I want you to solve. If you get those two pieces right, the majority of your copywriting is done. And unfortunately people, again, they don't go through this process. That's why their marketing absolutely sucks because it's not accurate. If you follow this process, I'm telling you, you create accuracy in your marketing and of course in your sales pitches. And we created your X factor, which was part of step two, what made you stand out in the crowd by plugging in the gaps, if you remember that. What we do in step six, what I show you how to do is how do you put this into a single sentence? Because this is the most important piece of your marketing. Your X factor is the focal point. It is the pinnacle of every single piece of marketing 
and sales pitches that you do. And if you get this wrong, you're going to struggle like everyone else because your stuff is just not accurate. It is not tailored to exactly what your customers, your real customers truly want. Okay, in step number seven, we're going to learn how to build your revenue generating plan. Now, how do we do this? 85% of your week should be on revenue generating tasks. Now let me explain how money is made in business. The only time you ever make money in business ever is if someone pays you by credit card, does a direct, direct deposit or gives you cash. It's that instant of transaction is when your business makes money no other time. So if you're a plumber and you do the sale or, or close the quote and then you're going doing the job, you're not making any money. If you're a doctor, engineer, mechanic, Whatever you are, if you're doing stuff other than selling and transacting, you're not making money. So one of the first things we do in the step seven I teach you is looking at what do you do when you get out of bed each day for that week of your business? Are you focusing on revenue generating tasks? Or are you doing all this other stuff that's chewing up your time and profits and cash flow and wearing you out because you're overworked and overstressed and the business is just not growing? Sound familiar? This is how we fix it. Now there is a more advanced module coming up in a, in a few steps time where we learn to restructure this whole business and fix all this up for you very, very easily. What we have to do for your, your revenue generating plan is we want to set tasks that when you get out of bed each day, you know exactly what you're doing, not guessing when you go to work and make sure that these tasks that you're doing are actually revenue generating, not eroding profits and time and cash flow. And the way we go about doing this is we need to set sales targets that are realistic and achievable. And then we need to have marketing budgets so you know what you're spending. And then what we've got to do is we've got to test and measure. Without test, testing and measuring, how do you know what's working? Or how do you know what um, should be fixed? If you don't know what's wrong, how can you fix it? So this is like a control loop of automating your business, finding out exactly what is wrong, correcting it, retesting and remeasuring, and that's how you improve. Okay, step number eight, turn your website into a silent salesman 24 seven. So let me ask you a question. Is your website right now making you money 24 seven on autopilot? And don't be despondent if it isn't because there's very few people whose website actually does this. But let me, I want to stress something very, very important at this point. Do you see that building your website is only in step number eight? Most people start a business. What is the first thing they do? I need to get a website up or my fan page or get onto YouTube or something. Can you see, hopefully by now you can see, you cannot build a website if you want it to succeed or a sales page or any sales funnel for that matter. If you don't have the first few steps in place because if you're putting a website together how do you know what your compelling headline must be what is your sales video going to be all about what are you going to ask for an opt-in which is getting a name and email for uh, what gift or, or are you going to offer to get a, your list which you're coming to is building your list how are you going to do anything what are you selling if you don't know what your customers truly want to buy from you that is why most websites suck they don't work because the research, the first seven steps of this process have not been put in place. I really hope that makes sense. So how do you start making or fixing your website so it starts to do what you want it to do, make money? Now, the, the way we do this is there's actually 12 points that I use to critique a website. And I have an x-ray that I put your website through in step eight. And what we do, what this x-ray reveals is your top three challenges and when you fix those top three challenges generally nine times out of ten your website starts to work right away and one of the first things we focus on is what is the purpose of your website most people say to sell things no the the the, the number one purpose of your uh, website no matter what your website's intent or purpose is is to gain trust for your customer Think about sales in the real world. When you go sit next to a salesperson, the first thing they should be doing, and again, not many of them actually do this, they should 
be gaining your trust before the sales process begins. Now, in the real world, what can you do? You can give them coffee and you can watch their facial expressions to see if they liking what you say that you don't like. You can put your arm around them, give them a nice gesture, use your cute little tricks in the real world to get customers to like you. But in the digital marketing world, they're looking at a screen. You can't do your little fancy tricks to make them love you. Your website has to achieve that. That is the first thing we work on. It's the number one point in this x-ray is we've got to get your customers to trust you the way we design and set up your website. Also, everything else doesn't matter. And follow proven templates. I know a lot of people go to fancy designers and they put all things together. It looks beautiful, but there's proven templates that work in the world of internet marketing. And I show you exactly all these proven templates that have worked for me and many of my clients. You have access to all of those instead of reinventing the wheel yourself. And the final piece is build your list. Anyone who knows internet marketing knows the money is in your list. This is building your tribe of your followers. You need to build them, get them into your environment, look after them really well, give them great value and that's how you can sell them ethically. This is the essence of internet marketing. And your website should be using this process to create it. If it's not, we need to do step eight. Okay, step number nine. Here we look at your digital marketing strategies. How do we create these? I know this section blows people's minds. It is so confusing out there in today's world. Every five minutes there's this new mega thing that's coming on the market and this new shiny object and we, we're all told to race after this because this is, the, this is the next big thing that's going viral and blah, blah, blah. And if you get sucked into that, you're going to wear yourself out. I've been down that rabbit hole a few times myself and honestly, I've almost burnt myself out. So what I did, I sat back, reflected on all this and I have a one page sales funnel where I take all of this in step nine where I work with you. We create a one pager for this. And what this does is it keeps you focused so you don't get shot off on tangents and land up honestly doing so much time where nothing gets done. There's no return on investment. How do we break this down? We start off with your website or your sales page if you have landing pages or websites or if you have both, it doesn't matter. And then what do we got to do? The first thing we got to do is we need to establish you as the go-to expert, the authority in your niche. That's a process. That's the first thing you've got to do, and it's not as hard as you think it is. Trust me, there are so many lunatics out there in this world on the internet driving everybody mad. And the way you break through is just tell your story, and there's a way you craft your story and be ethical about it, and this is how we begin to craft you as you as the go-to expert. The next thing is traffic strategy. So you can't just have a fancy looking website. It has to be a formula to convert, but you need traffic. It's a, a website with no traffic is like a pretty picture in a cupboard or a retail store with no one in it. It's the same thing. So you got to have strategies to drive traffic or visitors to your website. And there's several ways to do this. Now, most people don't do this. They don't focus on this. We all know about free and paid strategies, and I take you through a whole lot of free stuff. And then I talk to you about paid stuff as well, like Google Ads, etc. But here's the thing that most people don't think about on a website, is you can build your website and drive traffic offline as well as online. Most people only focus on online, but you can do fantastic stuff for free offline, such as when you go to conferences, if you do joint ventures, you go to networking events, you can do, do sales presentations at, um, you know, company events or whatever. There's a lot of stuff you can do offline to drive traffic to your website. Some of the other tra uh, traffic strategy will be things like Maybe you want to write a book on Amazon. Again, that is not as hard as you think it is. You don't need to be a, no, a, a fancy author. I have lots of books on Amazon that do really well, and they're about 20,000 pages, and they're great lead magnets for the business. So I'll show you how to do that. You have blog posts. You can have podcasts. These are all things that you can use to drive traffic to your, your website or your landing pages. The next thing is leveraging the social media mega platforms. Now, again, this is where... 
the wheels can really fall off the trolley because you can get involved with all these things and not every platform is right for your particular business or your audience. You have to work out which one it is. And then what you have to do is you need to put all of this in a structured format. Otherwise you are going to lose your mind. So the next stage is building your list. Your website with traffic coming to it, they look at the page, your website or sales page must be correctly designed where you're asking for an email for something in return, whatever that is, again, okay? that's why I said these are steps only happen now. So you're now building your list, you're getting people on your database. You then have to have a communication strategy to talk to these people. What do these people want to know about? This is why this is step nine. You, if you've done this program and you come to step nine, you know exactly what to put in those emails because you know what your customers really want to hear about. What are their greatest fears, angers, frustrations? What do they really want in outcomes from your products and services? That's what you communicate. But you have to have it in a structure. How frequently do you do it? When do you do it? What is the format? And this is where your copywriting comes in, in the previous steps. So this all comes together to make your digital marketing strategies really work. This really gives you a, a, the chance for your digital marketing strategies to work. Most people I work with have never even heard of the first few steps and this is why this is a complete shambles and doesn't make any money. And what I've done for you is we work in a one page sales funnel. This all goes on one piece of paper. Again, to get rid of that confusion and clutter and it's very, very powerful and it really does work. Okay, step number 10. How do you achieve mega sales and mega growth using joint ventures? Joint ventures are my underlying secret to mega growth in every single one of my businesses. This is my favorite step I love to teach you all. Joint ventures are hands down the single fastest way with the least amount of risk to massively grow your business. But joint ventures like copywriting is a skill that you can learn. And when you learn it, it will change your life. How do you go about doing this? Number one, you've got to tap into existing cash streams. Two, you've got to leverage off others' existing infrastructure and resource. Everything you need to build and grow your business is already out there. Businesses have spent years, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, learning mistakes, getting all the answers, getting all the customers, breaking into markets. Everything you need is already out there. You've got to learn to tap into these existing streams. This is how you get mega growth quickly. You don't sit there and try and reinvent the wheel and build the wagon yourself. That's not smart business. Smart business is tapping into all of this stuff very quickly to eliminate your risk, your overheads and get massive growth. I'm going to give you three powerful examples in a sec. And the other great thing about joint ventures is this is how you truly build passive reoccurring revenue streams in your business. So let me give you three examples. Number one, in my first business, which you've heard a lot about in this, in this uh, video. But when we were really struggling and we found our niche and we were trying to sell family computers and that, we still did not have buying power. So I knew I was in this red hot niche. I just didn't have enough buying power. We were too little and I didn't have lots of money to go and buy the volume of stock we needed to just start to compete with other competitors who are now coming into this niche. So I was pretty desperate. So what I did was sort of my last resort. We, we, I went to the biggest PC manufacturer in South Africa at the time and I sat down with a guy called Norman and we said, how the hell can we do this? Um, I've got this great opportunity. I'm the first one breaking into the home domestic, small little business, home office kind of environment. I've got all the solutions. We're doing really, really well, except I can't compete when people can buy elsewhere. So we'd, I did my first joint venture with them. They wanted to get into this market. I had the solution or the, the shop front to put all their banners up. I'd sell their product exclusively. They gave me prices like I was a big boy in the market that I could compete. They paid for most of my advertising and they, gave, they, they built all my machines and their assembly lines for me. This is making sense. So all the stuff I was trying to do myself now got offloaded. And that business became a national operation overnight. 
That is the power of joint ventures. That's when I really learned about joint ventures and how to be smart in business, not try to do everything yourself. My second example is when I built my ink distribution business. I was at home in a home office with a laptop and I came up with that idea of, of the pictures on ink cartridges which I mentioned earlier. I have never imported anything in my life. I had no idea how factories in Korea, Philippines and, and, and China worked which were ultimately I, I purchased from and I had no existing relationship with retailers and distributors around the world. So what I did was I used joint ventures to build this business very, very quickly. So the first thing I did was I set up a joint venture with an agent in Hong Kong. And yes, I had to give him a portion of my profits to him, which I had no problem with. I had no risk. I sat at home with a laptop. And within just a few weeks, I had factories set up with samples on their way to me in, in Korea, Philippines and China. And then I went to distributors. I started out in New Zealand. They had the warehouses, the sales staff, the marketing staff. They had existing relationship with the big retailers that had been going for 20 years. They went and presented my products and got them into the retail chains. I was doing joint ventures. So I sat at home and once this vehicle was moving, this is how you create passive reoccurring income. They're doing all the work, all the infrastructure because the joint ventures were set up correctly. And then I duplicated that model in five other countries. So this little business ran from my home office, was running five countries around the world with containers going into warehouses and selling hundreds of retailers around the world. That's joint ventures. That other, that's how to design their business from day one. That's why it was valued at three and a half million dollars in under three years. And the final example I want to give you is this exact course, seven week course I'm, I'm, I'm explaining to you about now. When this was being presented at the Richard Branson event, after that event, I was introduced to a guy who runs the largest veterinary buying group in Australia, 350 members, I think it was in this in his group. He heard about my system, I was introduced. They were looking for a, a system that could help businesses. Um, they wanted help with the vet businesses because vets are really good with fixing animals, not so good at business. Some of them were, but most of them, of course, not. And could we take this seven week program and put it to a vet, vet clinic and turn it around? So we trialed five uh, vet clinics over, I think, four or five months, and we got exceptional results. So what we did was we then created a joint venture between his company and my company, we put it together, and we created a company called the Complete Vet System. And that thing went and transformed the vet clinics around and we sold that after 14 months to an Australian stock market company for $820,000. Once again, passive income coming in, all this infrastructure. I know nothing about a veterinary industry, a uh, business, but I know business. I know how businesses work and I know how to fix them. So the system went in as a joint venture and boom, there you have. This is mega sales, mega growth using joint ventures. Very powerful and it's what I love to teach. Okay, step number 11, restructure for unlimited growth. Here's what most businesses find themselves trapped in this cycle they can't get out of. They're exchanging time for money and if you ever want to grow or be, uh, have unlimited growth or get out of cash flow problems and stress and overload, You've got to stop this cycle. You've got to restructure your business to get out of the cycle. How do you start to do this? Number one, you've got to focus on tasks to maximize sales. I spoke about this earlier. The only time you ever make money in business is at that point of transaction. Anything you're doing outside of that just doesn't work. You're not making money. You're causing yourself stress overload, work overload, low profits, low sales. So you've got to eliminate tasks that erode profits, cash flow, time. 85% of your revenue each day, each week should be on revenue generating tasks to maximize sales. And 15% should be focused on the non-revenue generating tasks. Now I mentioned this before, this does not happen in five minutes. This is a process we work through together to get to that outcome. But you have to have a clear goal in your head, otherwise you're never going to get there. So this doesn't happen overnight, so don't expect it to. 
And I put all of this in a one page plan so you can see at a snapshot how your business is right now. And I can almost guarantee you'll be horrified at what you see because I've never dealt with a business that has had this perfect. But it's very, very easy to fix. I'll give you two examples. Mick and Sandy, who I did this process with, they have a, a had a, a sheet metal business that had been going for about 12, 15 years. And these were incredibly hard workers, hard working. Like it, it was soul destroying to see how much little profit and, and reward they were getting for this business. And when we did this one page plan, here's what we saw. Of the revenue generating tasks which we analyze versus the non-revenue generating tasks, 93% of their day were sitting in the non-revenue generating tasks. 7% was focusing on sales. No wonder they're in that position. So within just six weeks, we've transformed this around, restructured, put their focus on the cash, and they increased sales, I think it was $50,000. The testimonials on my website with them for you to, to look at. The second example was a doctor I'm working with in Melbourne. He's got anti-aging clinics. And again, when I looked at this business, because he's a doctor and he's got staff, they are, he was overloaded with staff, all doing non-revenue generating stuff. But this is a business. And so naturally what people do is they gravitate to what they're comfortable with. Being comfortable doing the wrong things does not fix or improve your business. So the first thing I did was look at the structure and restructure this business and put his focus as a business person, not as the doctor, on maximizing sales. And that one restructure, that one session, added $54,000 profit. Not sales, not new customers, not some fancy marketing thing because of restructuring overheads in his business. There's gold in your businesses. You just got to know where to look and know what to do. This is one of the most profound things because what most people in businesses do, they always want to chase the sales. How do I have fancy marketing? I want to do all the improved websites, digital marketing. But this is the side of looking at your overheads, your structure. That's also vital for profitability. This is also vital for your time, your quality of life, and, and more, more, uh, uh, less stress, more time, working uh, uh, more, <laughs> working less but earning more. This is the secret to how you do that. Okay, step number 12. Transition from being self-employed to becoming a business owner. Now, this may come as quite a shock to some of you, but just because you've had a business that's been going for 20 years, you've got 50, $50 million turnover, and you've got 150 staff, doesn't mean you're a business owner. I learned this a very hard way. In my first business, even though I had 65 staff, I did, was doing $12 million turnover, and I had been in business for five years, I was not a business owner as I thought I was, with all that fancy stuff going on. I was in fact still self-employed. Why? Because my business was completely strapped to me. If I left, if I got sick, if I died, the business could not function. That's a very dangerous position to be in. It's, a very, it's not a very smart position to be in. I learned that the very hard way when I burnt out and lost that whole business. So I had to learn how to become a business owner. And again, a business owner's got nothing to do with how fancy your turnovers and all the stuff that people love to, to shout and promote. How do you start to do this? The first thing is you have to learn to outsource. Now, when I first started my business, when we started learning and selling to families, so I got through all the first part, what I thought we were, we were very, very clever doing was going and negotiating the cheapest prices for the parts to put together in the computer because that's where we thought, well, we'd negotiate and get the cheapest prices, we would make maximum profit out of selling the computer, which makes sense, right? But what I didn't realize at the time was how much time and effort and fixing problems when compatibility didn't work and all these things that was eroding that profit. So I was actually making no 
money, thinking I was making money. I was rushing around like a busy, busy fool. When I did that first joint venture with that big PC manufacturer, when they took all that uh, manufacturing away, when I negotiated like a, a, a platform price for all the PCs and the printers, etc., they took all that away. All I focused was on sales, maximizing sales per day. And when I did this one simple step, and it, it's, it's a mindset thing that I had to get over with in my, my own brain, the business went nuts. That was one of the biggest lessons I learned in business. The second biggest lesson I learned was in my distribution business. When this thing started to grow and had an international agent, this thing started getting way, like, it started getting a big business. And I was just at home and I didn't have enough experience uh, 20 years ago when this business was happening. I didn't, I didn't have enough to, to handle this international operation. So I decided at that point to, to get serious help in my business. So I went to the senior partner in Deloitte in New Zealand. And I asked for a meeting. I, you can't just go and see them. I had to get through my accountant, show my financials, all rigmarole to get an appointment. And the fee was <laughs> for three hours. Take a guess what you think the fee for three hours meeting would be. Seven and a half thousand dollars. I thought, oh God, what? Okay, this must be serious. I'm going to go in there and he's going to give me this whole plan of how I'm going to take on international markets and how I'm going to get investors and I'm going to sell. Anyway, I went in there for three hours and I came up with one piece of advice. And that one piece of advice changed my life forever. This is the importance of speaking to someone who knows what they're doing. This guy's one piece of information changed my life. He told me this one thing. Create a business or turn your business into a valuable asset that you can sell. Most people, including myself, my first business, I didn't know about creating a valuable asset. I didn't know I should be working to, to sell this thing off for maximum profits. All I was focused on trying to get sales and make profit and get through the day and hopefully have some money to buy some cool things. That was my focus for business. I came out of that meeting of three hours. That seven and a half thousand dollars was worth not, it was not, I had spent not even five cents because I took that knowledge that this gentleman showed me and I, I, that business became valued at three and a half million dollars in under three years because of what I learned in that very, very powerful lesson. <laughs> and you, <laughs> you want to know what happened next? I came out of that meeting and he said, if you want me to help you for the next three months, three months, this is what my fee is going to be to put this plan together for you. Can you guess what that fee was? Take a guess. $140,000 for three months. My business was doing really, really well, but if I took $140,000, that was my entire profit, everything I made for that first one and a half years. And I thought, if I take this, doesn't, it doesn't work. What am I going to do? I did it. It changed my life forever. Why? Because I was committed to building my business I didn't see it as a hobby and it paid off. The final thing, systems make you money in your business, not your products. All right. So if you don't have systems in your business, this is the, the module I teach you how to put systems into your business. Because if you ever, ever want to grow and expand without killing yourself, you've got to have systems that make you the money. Your products go into the systems, your systems go out into the market, that's how your business operates. And when you do this, this is how you have more time and less stress in your life. This is the module that puts this all together for you. Okay, step number 13. Build a mindset for success. Now, I always get asked this question. How come you don't put this mindset piece as step number one? And the truth is, most business owners out there think they know everything. They don't need help. The mindset thing doesn't apply to them. They just need sales and marketing strategies. I learned this very valuable lesson. Like I said, when I built my first business, $23,800, built a $12 million business, no one in that journey could tell me what to do because I thought I was so successful, I knew everything. And when that thing bombed and blew up and I lost everything, when I mean everything, that was a incredibly humiliating time in my life but it was the most powerful lesson I've learned in business and I learned 
No, you don't know anything. You just thought you, just thought you did. And what I learned through that journey of coming back was, you cannot do this alone. You need help. And the only way that happens is if your brain, your mindset allows that to happen. I've dealt with people that would rather go to their grave and burn their business and liquidate their house and lose everything than accepting help. Who the hell knows? I don't know. I don't get it. I went through that thing and I learned my lesson. That's why this is at the end because hopefully most people, not all of them, who come through this journey with me get to this stage and realize, you know what? I actually don't know everything I thought I knew. This is help I can genuinely use and they're open to that. In other words, their mindset now is available to accept success into their lives. It cannot happen before. It's that simple. So how do you go about doing this? 80% of success is in your mind. 80% of the, of the time is how you show up. Are you serious about coming to, to work, building your business, doing what it takes to get what you need to do? 80% of that is in your mind. Your why. You've probably heard this many, many times. Your why. The reason that you are building your business is to make money. The, the, the reason, uh, sorry, the, 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 your, your business is the vehicle to make you money. The reason why you yourself are personally in business should not be to make money. The business does it for you. The business should be making money for you to do something in your life. That's called your why. And your why is the biggest motivator. So forget about all the motivational books and courses and all that stuff that you read, whatever. If you do not have a burning why of why you're building this business to make the money to get you to the why, you are going to struggle and most probably give up. And here's a simple reason why. If you just go into business just to make money and that business doesn't make money, which mine did for 18 months, my first one made no money. It was living hell. We were working 16 hours a day, weekend, six months straight, burning ourselves out. We weren't making any money. And I did give up three times, but then I came back. The reason I came back was because of my why. I was never comfortable until this day working for someone else, telling me when I can go on holiday and when I can't do this and can't do this. And I'm a, am I allowed a lunch break? I'm just need some clown telling me what I can and can't do with my life. That just doesn't work for me. So that didn't work. The other thing too was having a fixed paycheck. No matter how hard you worked, how committed you were, how loyal you were, you got your same paycheck every month. That just doesn't work for me. So building your why, your why, that thing just drove me through my first business. I said, I'm never going back to that. No ways. And so that drove me to eventually I broke through. This is 80% of success in your mind. This is why this piece is at the end. The other piece is understand business is a journey. If I can give you a bit of advice, I don't know everything, but I know things because I've learned things the hard way. If you understand that business is a journey and you, you need to be committed to this journey, it's not a hobby, you want to try and see what happens. Every business, every day, all around the world have problems every single day. There's no business in the world that does not have problems. But the ones who are successful are the ones who just deal with these problems. And if you've got a framework and a structure and a support network to help you, it's not that bad. Which leads me to the final point. You cannot do this journey alone. If you think you can build a business in isolation by yourself with no support and no guidance, it ain't going to work. I know this from personal experience. It just doesn't work. So there you have the 13 steps of how you renovate or transform your business that you can start using right away in your business today. Now in the final part of this video, I want to introduce you to my seven week business transformation course. And this is how you take these 13 steps and put them into manageable weekly time chunks. And this is how you can start to get real results in your business. So let me take you through the process of exactly how it works and what you learn. In week one, we find your cash paying raving fans. And we work through step one and step two together. 
In step one, we find the red hot niches relative to your business, where the cash is flowing and where your business should be positioned. So we shift and sift your business into the sweet spots where the cash is flowing. And then step two, once you're inside this niche, we then create your X factor. How do you, your business, stand out in this crowd of this busyness? And we do this all on a one page planner. So you get a very clear snapshot of where your business is right now and where you need to move into these hot niches. And we shift and sift until we get there. And you also have on this one page summary all the critical information coming up. Your customers' fears, wants, ultimate outcomes, customer uh, competitor analysis so that you know exactly when it comes to your marketing sales presentations, your foundation is 100% to make your marketing and sales really, really accurate. In week two, we now build your sales pipeline together and we cover steps three, four, and five. Firstly, week three, we find which group of customers, your real customers, we find your hot pot, which customers out of all those others in that hot niche are gonna buy from you the quickest and the easiest. This is our first step in week two. Once we've found those people, how do we find out? Through research, we design products and services that we, that we know they really and truly want to pay cash for easy. Then we tailor match that solution. So you're creating products that you're going to sell quicker and easier to them. And finally in step five, we work on your irresistible hook and we, and we create your upsell funnel with products you know customers are now going to buy from you. And once again, this is the quickest route to the cash. In week three, we look at creating your marketing plan and we cover step six and step seven. Now in step six, I teach you copywriting secrets. I show you how to write emails that convert. I give you templates and examples that you can use and copy. I show you how to create powerful sales videos. There's actually eight steps to putting a sales video together. And I show you examples and templates on how to do that. I teach you how to create compelling headlines. All right, headlines are the things like on the newspaper. If people don't get your headline, forget about anything else. They're not gonna to move to your copy. And I teach you how to write compelling sales pages. And I give you tons of templates and examples. In step seven, we look at your revenue generating marketing plan. Remember what I said, you've got to wake up in the morning and you've got to know exactly what you're doing for this day, for this week. And if you wake up and you've got a focused plan for your business of things that are going to make you money, your business can only improve. Make sense? And what we do is we create a one page plan for you because then it's very easy. It's a snapshot. You don't get overwhelmed or confused. It's nicely laid out for you. It's very powerful and works really well. In week four, we look at your digital marketing strategy and we cover steps eight and step nine. So we look at your website. Is it making money 24 seven? If it's not, how do we get it doing that? And that doesn't take five minutes. That is a process. The first thing we do is we put your website through the 12 point x-ray. That x-ray is gonna reveal from your website the top three challenges you are facing right now. And that's what we focus on. Because by focusing on just those three, we're gonna be able to fix 99% of your website's problems and get us to achieving your goals. I'll give you plenty of proven templates that we can copy and you can use instead of trying to do this and guess by, all by yourself. And then I'm gonna show you how you build your list. That very important piece you have to have if you're gonna ever do internet marketing. In step nine, we create your sales funnel. I'm gonna teach you how you become the go-to expert. How do you become the authority in your niche? And as I said, it's not as complicated as you think it is. It's actually very, very easy. I'm gonna give you the three rules of communication. How do you influence your tribe? How do you communicate and connect with your tribe in a way that they love you, wanna buy from you, and that you look after them correctly? There's three ways you do that. There's three rules. 
And then I'm going to show you traffic and conversion strategies relative to your business. This is really important. Which social media platforms and which traffic strategies are relevant to your business? Because not all of them are relative to everyone's business. And if you try and do everything at once, you'll end up being overwhelmed, confused, and nothing happens. That's why all of this, again, is put into a one-page plan for you so that you can see at a snapshot what to do so you don't get overwhelmed and confused. In week five, I teach you how to do joint ventures, how you get prepared for mega sales and mega growth using leverage. So we cover step 10. And I teach you all about joint ventures. How do you find the correct joint venture partners? That's not as easy as it sounds, but if you use a few clever tricks, you get to the right people who don't waste your time. Two, how do you actually create successful joint ventures when you find these right people and not send them running out the door? Three, how do you, once you structure joint ventures, relative to your business, how do you design and create passive revenue streams? When your mindset gets into the zone and you learn how to do this, I promise you your life changes. Every business I work on has got passive revenue streams coming out of it. It's what I designed from day one and what I love to teach you how to do. And when you start to get to this level week five, the more advanced strategies, this is truly how you start to work less and you begin to earn more. So no fluff and hyped up rubbish. This is the real stuff. Because we are now learning how to leverage. In week six, we restructure your business for unlimited growth. We cover step 11 and step 12. In step 11, the first thing we do, and this is all on a one page planner, so you can easily see this. These one page plans have worked miracles for the people who've done this course because everything is so simple and on this one page we're going to see what tasks you're doing every day what are you doing to maximize sales what are you doing to erode profits time that messes up your cash flow and we restructure this on one piece of paper to to get your percentages and your business correct it's actually a very easy task unbelievably powerful just not many people know about it and what happens when we do this? You immediately improve profits and your cash flow. And in step 12, this is how you begin to put your business on autopilot. You've heard me explain about the, the self-employed business owner transition. Well, in step 12, this happens. And again, this is not a click your finger thing. This is we are going through a process together. You are learning the right things in the right sequence. And very importantly, Hopefully, the lessons are explained to you. You're starting to turn your business into a valuable asset that you can cash out for one day or hand down to your children or whatever you want to do. But you're not just working for profits every month. You're building a valuable asset. So you're collecting wealth, you're building wealth, as well as earning profits each month. That's a completely different mindset to have most businesses out there struggling to get through the day. And finally, an introduction of how you build systems in your business and when you start to do this there's more advanced strategies this is how you start to build the proper quality of life the reason you intended to go into the business in the first place and finally in week seven we learn to build a mindset to attract success this is a very very important uh, week we learn to develop mental armor Okay, this is really important. When you start to get to these more advanced stages, you become more organized, you become more efficient. It just naturally happens. Of course, you need structure, but it all starts in your mind. And hopefully by this stage, you're ready to do that. And that during this process, you become more resilient. Because the truth is, the truth is out there. There's no business out there who doesn't have problems every single day of the week. Every business has got problems every day. But if you learn to adapt to these problems and understand business, it's a journey. 
and you learn to become resilient to these things because you know things are going to go wrong and it doesn't matter you're going to fix it and with the structure and the tools and someone had to help and guide you you can get through these things so what does this mean it means you can actually begin to enjoy your business journey it doesn't become this terrible lump of lead or rocks on your head that you're carrying around killing yourself Okay, so I've shown you how the seven weeks are broken down and how the 13 steps fit into each of those weeks to give you manageable, sizable chunks. Now the question is, how does my training work? Well, the first thing is the st structured time frame. Every business that's successful needs structure. You can only get results if you have structure. If you've got loose structure, you get loose results. Two, follow the online lessons. This is very important. The lessons in my courses are genuine, street smart, practical lessons. There's no fluff or made up stuff or get rich schemes. These are all true to my life lessons that I put together to help you in the real world of business. I have workbooks and workshops for every single one of the modules that you work through. Why is this so important? When you're working in a workbook on your business, you're actually building and fixing your business. You're not just sitting and learning a whole lot of theory that you can actually never apply. When you're doing this work, every, every step, you're, act, you're actually building and fixing your business in real time. That's a huge difference with this course compared to many others. And four, I, I am full of real life case studies on my own personal uh, case studies and lots and lots of my students have been through this course so you can see this stuff truly does work one of the examples that i forgot to mention earlier was of um, a young chap called tony bloom who started off with me in one of my business workshops when i was doing little breakfast clubs and he's been through this entire program and you'll see his uh, testimonials, his, his actual website is in the, the website section. He now earns $100,000 a year in passive income. His goal, his big why, initially was to play tennis. That's the reason he was building his business, to give him passive income to build a business. It took him eight years. Again, okay, this is real world. But he's achieved that goal and now he spends his day playing tennis. His business runs on autopilot. He just has to maintain and manage a few things. He started off with me with zero business experience. He's been through a journey. He's a great friend of mine now and he deserves all the success, but he's worked really hard for it. But he followed the process. All these testimonials, these interviews with these guys, lots of them that you can see, it's not all made up, it's genuine. It all starts up with this format of how they learn. And finally, as you've seen, this is a step-by-step -step sequential thing that you build. It's like building Lego. Okay, so all the pieces go in the right place. So here's a quick summary of what you get so there's no confusion. You get the seven-week full training up front. You have access to over 135 training videos. You get all the workbooks and workshops up front. You have 24-7 access to work at whatever you want at your own convenience. And you have lifetime access. So how do you get started? Very easily with absolutely zero risk. I give you a seven day free trial to trial everything out. There are no catches. I don't work like that. There's no catches. This I see is the start of a relationship. And I would love to meet you in my community forum. It's a Facebook forum. It's private and it's got members of all my stuff that I do work with. I'm, I'm in there daily. I connect with them. I look after them. And you can meet all the other people around the world who are involved in my programs. So I know you are asking, well, what's my investment to get involved in this course? Before I do that, what's really important for you to understand is the value of this course. This is what you're getting from me. You're getting my 25 years of experience that I've been scratch building businesses across three countries, both online and offline, across multiple, multiple industries. 10 plus years of renovating businesses. So clients' businesses, other people's businesses, other than my own. 
You've heard about my $12 million mistakes, plus I've made many more along the way. I teach you all of those so that you can avoid catastrophes like myself. And finally, I have probably spent over $300,000 of personal development, all the courses I've done over the years. This is all given to you in these courses. That's the value of this course. So what I want you to do is write down, what do you think it's worth to you if someone gave this all to you? What is it worth to you? So I want you to answer these questions. And this is really, really important because this is the real cost of not fixing your business. And most business owners put their head in their sand, they ignore this, or they don't want to acknowledge it. But this is real. I want you to write these down if you can. Number one, how many years have you been struggling in business? Please write that down. Most businesses I work with, it's anywhere between five, 10 or 15 years. So I've just put an example down of five. Please put your answer down. Two, how much profit should you be making in your business? What is the right figure for you? Remember this is profit. So take your salary aside, what is left? You went into business to give you a lifestyle of your choice. So the, the figure should be reflective of that, whatever that means to you. I put down $250,000. If your business has been going for several years, honestly, it should be making at least $250,000 profit a year. Otherwise, you need, you need help. That's the truth. Right now, question three, please write it down. How much money is your business making for you right now? I'm talking about profit. So not how much salary you have. Salary is you take out. What is left after you've drawn a proper salary, a market-related salary? How much money is left? Maybe you're making nothing. It's fine. Be honest. Write it down yet because this is the real cost of not fixing your business. And then the final piece, how much are you losing each year by not fixing your business? And the way you find that out is you take how much money should your business be producing that you wanted to versus what you're actually making right now in reality. So in this case, for every year this business is not fixed, it's losing $200,000. That's the real cost. So if you carry on like this for another five years, you've lost $1 million. That's the real cost. And there's a few more very important pieces on this. And the reason I'm hopping on this is because most people ignore it. They don't want to acknowledge this. But this is real. It's true. How much stress are you enjoying as a business owner struggling? How much time have you lost? How many events of your children or your family have you not been able to go to because work has sucked you away? This is not a quality of life. This is a poor quality of life. And that is not what you set out in business to do. This is not what your business should be doing for you. And what happens over time, most businesses unfortunately give up, uh, business owners give up and they close their businesses. Sometimes voluntary, sometimes they have no choice. Generally, when this happens, the outcome is not very good. You've got marriages and divorces and all, and some people do even more extreme things. It's not very pleasant. This is the real cost of fixing your business. So, I want to ask you two things. What is it worth to you to have someone help you fully renovate your business? and help you build a business that you intended to build in the first place and help you build the profits that you wanted to build in the first place. What is that value amount for you to take all this away and for someone to give you a business, a fully renovated business or help you build it? Please write that down. And while you're writing that down, I want you to compare to this. This is your investment for this course. The first option is $239 a month times three months. That's the first option. The second option, the, se the second option is $97 a month. And that comes with support. I'll explain all this in a second. What I want you to do is that number that I've asked you to write down, I want you to compare to this value and see if this is right for you. So here's the final summary. Option one is $239 a month times three months. You get full access to everything. The entire course, you can access it 24 seven at your own convenience 
and you get lifetime access to all my course modules. Option two is $97 a month. I've introduced this because it's become very popular for people asking for monthly support. You get full access, you get 24 seven. The difference between the two is every month I get together with business owners around the world on an online call and I do live reviews on your workbooks or your questions or I review your work and I answer live Q&A so everyone learns from everyone else. This is an incredibly powerful format that works very, very well. This keeps you focused, it keeps you disciplined, it keeps you motivated, it keeps you on track and most importantly, I give you a single goal every month to focus on so you know exactly what you should be doing each month to move forward. And you get live access, uh, sorry, you get lifetime access to the, the entire stuff after six months. There are no contracts, no catches, no hooks. And you get a seven day free trial. Why do I do this? I do this because I only want to work with people who genuinely want to build and fix their businesses. So if you trial it is not for you, I get it, I understand. This is not for everyone. But if you are genuinely serious about, you know, wanting to build a better life for yourself, build your business, helping people fix their businesses and building businesses is my passion. It's been my passion since I was a kid. I love to do this. But I only love to do this with people who really want to make a change in their lives. And if that is you, I truly look forward to, to working with you, helping you fix your business, renovate your business, build your dreams, and get that business doing what it should be doing in your life.